and thank you for making me a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you again. I mean, um, there have been reports that slowly the situation the CAR is going back to normal. Um, from your point of view, is that true? Uh, going back to normal would be pushing it. But what I'm very pleased to say, after having done a lot of interviews over the past year with really nothing but bad news to report, Yesterday, we had something that appears to be quite good for the Central African Republic happening. Uh, a, a woman became the interim president. Her name is Catherine Sambapanza, as your report showed a moment ago. And it's safe to say that most people in the Central African Republic, at least those who've received the news by now, think that she's the right choice. Uh, she's, she doesn't have a political background. She's not, she doesn't belong to any particular political party. Uh, she's a respected businesswoman, a respected, respected legal expert, and a respected defender of women's rights as well. So uh, that's, a, that's the good news. One of the first things she said when she won the vote to become the interim president was she appealed to all the people who've taken up arms, whether they be the former members of Seleka, who the predominantly Muslim rebel group, or the uh, members of the anti-Balaka group, the predominantly Christian uh, rebel group, she told both of them to please put down your arms, it's time to come together. Mm -hmm. That message probably hasn't reached the outer limits of the country yet, so it's, it's going to be a little while before we know no. uh, whether or not a, a, an important page has been turned. Do you think violence. she'll be able to bring peace and stability in the country? And the fact that she's also a woman, do you think it plays a role in, in perhaps finding hope in the CAR? Yes. I mean, the short answer to that is yes. I, 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 members of Seleka, old members of the political guard in the Central African Republic are united today in saying they think she's the right choice. They think it's good that a woman is in charge because, quite frankly, men since independence and prior to independence have, have not done anything that's made Central African Republic a country to be proud of. It's, mm. it's a country that's been in a, a state of crisis since its inception in, in 1960. Uh, it's also important to remember that she's an interim president. Mm. We have very high hopes for her. And, uh, but whatever happens, she has to leave power by this time next year. In terms of the peace agreement uh, for the Central African Republic, designed by regional powers, presidential elections must be held by February 15th, 2015. And neither the new interim president or anybody else in her administration is allowed to stand in those elections. So she's got a lot to do yeah. in a short period of time. But then going back to the previous leader, Michel Jotodia, what do you think made him or caused him to fail to restore peace in the CAR? Well, I don't think he ever really tried to, tried to restore peace. I mean, his biggest problem is that nobody listened to him. He was a rebel leader, and the rebels did not follow his, his instructions. I mean, the, the day South African troops were, were killed in, in, in Bangui mm -hmm. on March 24th last year, when, when Jotodio came to power, he told his followers to lay down their arms on that very day. And they didn't do it. And he's been trying, he had been trying to get them to do so ever since. Uh, he, he, he just didn't have a following. That was his biggest problem and weakness. Yeah. Now moving forward to now to troops. I mean, the European Union agreed on Monday to send hundreds of troops to the Central African Republic. I mean, is this too late following the deaths of already, you know, a th more than a thousand people that have been killed so far? Well, it's a bit like the, the question of, you know, when's the best time to plant a tree 50 years ago and the next best time is today. Uh, I mean, a lot of people have been killed. It would have been better if those troops had arrived earlier, but it's good that there were, they are arriving now because it, the, the Central African Republic has known no security or stability in decades. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the larger the peacekeeping force is, the more it can spread out across a territory that's uh, roughly the same size as France and Belgium combined, you know, the better. The, the Europeans aren't due to arrive until the end of, end of February. And they're mm -hmm. likely to be put in charge of the airport in Bangui, which is at the moment secured by the French military. That will allow the French, who are seasoned in this sort of conflict, yeah. to go out into the regions and hopefully, with the help of the AU-led force, MISCA, uh, rest, r bring some sort of stability. Yeah. But speaking of the French again, David, we do understand that, you know, the French and, of course, other 4,000 African um, troops are under a UN mandate. But why do you think they're still unable to end the violence in the CAR? Well, I think they haven't had a lot of time to do that. They, the, the MISCA, the AU-led mission, taking over from a regional mission known as FOMAC last, last December, has, has only recently received, uh, received extra support from countries such as, as Burundi and, 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 and Rwanda only a few days ago. Uh, they have a mandate 
to, to go up to 6,000 members, which they haven't reached yet. It's, it's a big country. There's very little infrastructure. To go into the areas where a lot of this violence is happening requires air support, logistics, something that the African Union doesn't have the means to provide without the help of other parts of the international community. The Security Council in, in, in New York, the United Nations Security Council, uh, is, is continually watching the, the situation in the CAR closely and considering possibly offering extra logistical support to the African Union or perhaps even turning the African Union mission into a, a, a fully-fledged UN peacekeeping, peacekeeping mission, which would give them you know, the, the, the oomph, the, the, the air support and, and the cash needed to, to cover the country uh, more efficiently. But the UN has also stated that um, the CAR is on a verge of a genocide. How accurate is that? Well, genocide is a, is, a, is a big word, and that, that, that statement came from the, the, the UN Special uh, Rapporteur for Genocide, uh, Adam Adjeng. He said that a few months ago, and he was trying to warn the international community that if it didn't act quickly, yes, that, that could happen. I, I'd, I, I wouldn't say that the CAR is in the same situation that Rwanda was back in 1994, but yes, because of instability, because there's no rule of law, because it's a free-for-all in, in, in the rural areas, people aren't getting food, crops aren't being planted, so disease is, is, is rampant, uh, hunger is, is a major problem. The three things that the new interim president has to address right away are mm -hmm security, stability, uh, getting food aid and, and medicine to people who, who haven't seen any, anything of that sort in months, if not years, and then try to build an administration in a country that doesn't have one. David Smith, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. That was, of course, David Smith, the director of the Okapi Consulting Company. But now there's some